Hello everybody, let's do uh, properties of real numbers. Uh, we're going to talk about algebraic equations and the numbers and different properties uh, or, and also some identities. Uh, not identities, yeah, property of real numbers and we will talk about inequality and um, also some of the identities. Yes, I was not wrong. Okay. So look at this, these are all the vocabulary words that we are going to use for the, these are all the ones for equal sign and it, it's going to help you change. Um, in the first video, I think I gave you guys for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division the vocabulary words and this is the equal. So it's going to help you change this word uh, problem or just a sentence into an expression, into an equation, sorry. The sum of, let's do this, the sum, sum is sum of x of x and 9 is, is means, is right there, is means equal, equal 24. So this is means equal. Now you know the operation goes between the two terms, so I'm going to make sure that it goes right there, okay, and that's equation in this case. Okay, let's do question uh, example number two. I have three times, hold on, let me see where did it go. It's three times the sum of five, the sum of five and y amounts To nine. Okay, so let's try and solve this. Uh, that's the answer. Okay, I have, I don't know why I did that, three times. So three is multiplying, like times, like this times, multiply. The sum of five and y amounts to, look at this, amounts to means equal to 9. 9 is going to be 9. Okay, let's change this. Now, 3 times the sum. You see the times, the sum, multiplication, addition, when they comes like like this, like consecutively, like that, then it means this 3 is multiplying with the addition. So, how do I multiply this with addition? It's going to go something like this, 3 times, and you know, addition goes between the two, uh, between the two terms sum of 5 and 5, uh, y amounts to 9. So this is what it should look like. Okay, let's talk about um, what else we can talk about. There is inequality and I'm going to move this up right there. So these are inequalities inequality symbols. A is equal to, you see the is equal to is really important, is equal to, then is not equal to and is less than. So these three words when you have them is less than three words when you have them. Then you're gonna have inequality. You see that? All of them. And if you guys pay attention, I'm, I'm doing something like this. A less, is less. So less, when I'm reading in this direction from A, from the left side, from the A side, then less, you know, inequality, this means less, and that means greater, okay? Alligator mouth in this corner, that's why we call it greater. So A less is less, so it means that corner is supposed to go towards A. A is less than B. And I can say A is greater than B, then I'm going to read it from the A side again. A greater. So that open mouth is supposed to be towards A. Greater than B. That's how it goes. If I'm reading from the uh, right side, like a B, B less than A. That's how it goes. B less than A. B greater than A. That's, you guys pay attention to that. Okay. Now, um, Let's try some questions here before I go to that word problem. 
Here is a question I have. It says uh, write each sentence using mathematical symbols like these symbols. You have the difference. Of seven and a number of seven I don't know why it went there seven and a number is less than 42 now pay attention I have is less than do you see the three words 42 now the difference subtract seven in the number is less than 42 since I'm reading from the left side so when it says is less than this less supposed to comes towards all of this and you know operation always goes between the two terms so I'm gonna have 7 minus x less than 42 and that will be my answer okay now let's try one more I have I'm gonna write it up here the quotient of y in twice x is the same as the product of 4 and z in z so how do i translate that let's pick up color the quotient is going to go like this of y and twice x is the same is the same as the product is the same means equal the product multiply of 4 in z okay now we have to just put them together now you know that they said for the product of 4 in z so the multiplication goes between 4 and z so i'm going to write them there is a multiplication between them the quotient of y in twice x the quotient quotient supposed to be between them right and since y comes first then y is a numerator and twice x is the denominator is the same as is the same as which means equal product of 4 and z so this is what i have so it's really easy if you guys uh, really pay attention to that and uh, Make sure that you change everything to math before you go and do anything else. Okay, let's do some of the identities that we have. We have um, additive identities, like I'm just going to write here identities. We have additive, additive means addition, right? Adding, additive identity. Additive identity means um, this is uh, all the time additive identity is zero when you add zero with any number you're gonna get that number back which means that number is getting identity back I mean if that way you can remember then we have multiplicative identity a uh, multiplicative means uh, multiplication so it's gonna be is one so anytime when I multiply anything with one, I'm going to get that number back. Again, that number is getting identity back. Okay, so let's do, and also we need to know additive inverse. What is additive inverse? Now, guys, look at the, look at the word additive, addition, inverse, opposite. So this whole word, that means opposite okay it's just a simple way to say opposite if i say what is the additive inverse of negative five and you're gonna tell me it's positive five that's all it means okay now let's see the identities now we also know the reciprocal you know when i have two third and i tell you to find the reciprocal of this this is something you guys already know but i'm just gonna review it when i say it's reciprocal then it means three over two you flip them okay Let's do the identities. The identity that we have, the first one, is commutative identity or a commutative property. So let's go for commutative property. Commutative 
property. You guys learned this long time ago. What is commutative property? The easy way, I'm not using their definition. The easy definition for my students, they always remember it when it's commutative property. You s switch their places. Switch places. Okay, so what is that supposed to mean? Look what I mean by this. For example, if I have 6x plus 7, I want you to find a commutative property for this. And you're going to say equal 7 plus 6x. You see, I switch their places, like 6x, instead of this guy, I have 7 on the other side, and instead of 7, I have 6x. That's what it means, switch your places, so you will remember that. Okay, then another one I have is associative property. Associative property. What is associative property? The definition is going to be something, but for me, I told my students, um, move parentheses and these are just like a code words kind of thing and they remember it what it means and how to do it so let's try for example I have mm, let's see something good I have three times eight y I put this in parentheses if you want associated property then you see you pick up this parentheses move them up here so the parentheses goes here times 8 and then y is going to go here. You see, I move just the parentheses over here. That's associated property. So move parentheses. Okay. Then another one we have is a distributive property. And everybody should know that I love distributive property. I like that distributive property all the time. Okay, what is distributive property? Like you're distributing, you're multiplying. So if I have, for example, 4. Uh, x plus 3y parentheses close then or you're gonna have this is positive that's part of it make sure but distributive property you multiply i'm gonna write this uh in here multiply signs first multiply sign first multiply sign first okay signs so Make sure that this is really important you remember this because most of the time students forget about their signs. Okay, this is important. Now let's do that over here. Uh, positive times, you know I'm multiplying this, right? So before you multiply 4 and x, I'm going to multiply positive and positive is positive. 4 times x is 4x. Again, positive times this positive is positive and 4 times 3 is 12y. These two are not like terms, so I'm just going to keep them, okay? Next example, I have negative 4y minus 2. Again, I don't have any number here, not a variable, but I have a sign and I tell my students if you feel better, you can put one there, but I mean, really, if it's a sign multiplying, then it's multiply with the signs. So technically, I'm multiplying this sign with that one, I'm multiplying sign with this one. So negative times positive is negative 4y, negative times negative is going to give me positive 2. They are not like terms, I'm going to keep them. Okay, let's try this word problem and that's the last thing. Write it as an algebraic expression, two numbers have a sum of 26. Let's translate this first before even we read the rest of the question. Two numbers, I would say x and I don't know what other number is going to be, uh, probably another x, uh, have a same sum of 26 here you go if one number is x okay there is one number that's x represent the other number this number okay i don't know this number because they didn't mention so let's not do x let's do question mark two numbers have a sum of 26 one number is x represent the other number as an expression in x okay so if i'm if I'm looking for this question mark, then you know I have to make sure the question mark is by itself. Like you are telling me solve for uh, this question mark, right? Solve for question marks, you make it by itself. So I'm going to subtract x, I'm going to subtract x both sides. So I got question mark equal 26 minus x. So this question mark is my second number. Okay, that's how you do it. Um, do I have anything else? I don't think so. So this is what we have for 
properties of real numbers make sure you copy down this make sure you copy down this and you know what i mean division quotient make sure you remember whatever comes first goes on the numerator or goes first like however you want to do it okay uh, like my videos subscribe please and if you have any questions comment below have a good day guys bye